All right, we are returning to exercise two. We haven't looked at it since Wednesday, so what do I do? I find my folder, I open it up, and I want the PSD version. So I'm going to actually go ahead and just make my icons a little bit bigger here, just within my folder, just so you guys can see them clearly, because we haven't really talked about your organization in a while. So I have my master folder. It's got this name. I've got two folders in it now. I'm starting to dump other things in it as I have ideas for future projects, but these will eventually get sorted into, into what we're doing. And this is what I did with the last videos, you know, kind of came up with this simple emoji of this cat looking a little chaotic. And then I opened it up in photo P and I have that marked as yellow because the PSD is a file format that means Photoshop document. It's what we call a working file format. You do not put it online. It does not go on to canvas because it's big, it has lots of layers. But until we're using Photoshop, we're going to use it within PhotoP, the program that's in the assignment, this freeware that you can use on any computer with an internet connection. I don't even have to log into PhotoP, but then I drag and drop the PSD into it, and that will have all the layers that I started. Now, all I did to set it up in PhotoP was to make sure my image size, I brought my screen grab in, like that, and then I knew I wanted to grow around it a little bit. I have kind of a sketch of what I'm thinking of right here. Don't know if I'll have the tongue sticking out or not. I just made a little sketch and then I took a photograph of it. And even though it's blurry, that helps. I'm going to tuck that off to the edge. So what I did is I went to image, image size, because before we make any new layers, I want to make sure I'm in a good pixel space. And I made mine 10 by 10 inches physical dimensions by 300 pixels per inch. So that's your resolution. Resolution is always measured in pixels per inch. If it's less than 300 pixels per inch or fewer pixels than 300, then you don't have print quality resolution. And if it's less than eight by 10 inches or fewer than 10 by eight by 10 inches, then you don't have big enough physical size to make a reasonable print. So those are always my two requirements, that it be physically at least 8 by 10 inches and resolution at least 300 pixels per inch. That's what's called standard minimum print resolution. Even though that is bigger than what the screen grab was, and so when I forced it up, you can see how it made it kind of blurry. Just like my sketch, just because it's an out-of-focus picture, is kind of blurry. That is fine. What's not blurry are the vector shapes we're going to make to create it for ourselves. So there's really only one tool we're going to use in PhotoP for this project. And that is the shape tool, the vector shape tool. And of these vector shapes, we're only going to use the rectangle, the ellipse, the parametric shape, which is basically any hard edge shapes like triangles, octagons, and the custom shape tool. We are not going to use the line tool. So if you want like something that looks like a line, I want you to think of it as something cut out of paper. You can't cut a line out of paper. You can only cut a line into paper, right? Because a line has no height to it. It just has a length. So instead of using the line tool, you are going to use the rectangle, and I'll just show you that now, and draw, and then you can make it as skinny or as thick as you want. But what we want are the anchor points at all four corners of that rectangle. Whenever you make a new shape, it makes a new shape layer. And then we can use our old friend from the last project, Edit Free Transform, to mess with that shape. So if I want a curved line, what I would do is use Free Transform. The shortcut for that in Photo P is Option Command T, but you can also go to Edit Free Transform. And then I would do Warp. Because remember, warp makes it so I can push it around. 
like it's a piece of spaghetti, right? And you see how many anchor points it's creating to make that happen. But it's still a vector. How do we know it's a vector? Because in the, ve in the layer window, I'll zoom in on it, you'll see this little box. And so if I try to use raster tools, like the brush tool, it will say it's not an editable layer because it's not. It's a vector. The vector can only have one color path on it. So how do I change the color? And why is it all blue right now? Those blues are actually all the anchor points of that clean vector shape. And as soon as I click off of it, those lines go away and we have a perfectly clean shape. But what if I want to change the color? I have to double click on the, the layer window box. And then I can just pick a different color. And so that's how I can get a curved line using the shape tools. But I don't want a curved line for mine, not yet. I want to just build up with the basics first. So the first thing I did was just this yellow circle. It's more of an ellipse. If you want to lock, if I want to do that again, I would go to the shape tool, hold down on it until I get the ellipse. Yeah, I got to zoom out. So there are other vector tools within PhotoP like above it, but I don't want you to use any of these. I don't want you to use any of the pen tools or the path select tools. That's because we're going to learn them in Illustrator much more effectively later. But I want you to use just shapes and I want you to use just free transform. And I don't want you to use line. So if I make another circle and I want it to be a perfect circle this time, I click and drag, but this time I hold down shift and shift will lock it into a perfect circle. And then if I want to modify it, I can always hold down shift to change its size while locking its proportions, or I can let go of shift and I can stretch it. So you'll see all these ways you can manipulate these vector shapes. Now here's the tricky part. I've started to make shapes, just one, but that immediately, because you want to start with your biggest shape and then smaller ones on top, just like cut paper, but that immediately covers up my plan, right? My sketch. So what can you do? Well, you can make a duplicate of that screen grab. So we're going to learn how to make a duplicate. Duplicate is incredibly helpful. And the way to do it, the long way is to go to layer, duplicate layer, once you're selecting on a layer. The really fast way that's wonderful for both layers and selections is Command J. So Command J will duplicate that layer you had selected, and then I can just move that above my shape layer. Now that now covers up my shapes. So what I'm going to do is take its opacity down to about 30%, just a third. This is called onion skinning. And then I'm going to lock it by clicking on the padlock. So I don't accidentally select this layer anymore. So if I need to select shapes, I'll use the move tool with auto select. And that will not select the, the kind of tracing paper on top, right? So now, if I want to draw this eye, I'm going to build it on top of the shape tool I have selected now. And I draw a new circle. And this time I want it to be a perfect circle, so I'm going to hold down Shift. And then I want it to be white, so I double click on the window in the layers. Push it all the way to pure white. And then if I want to change its shape, what do I do? Edit, free transform. If I want it to stay a perfect circle, all I need to do is drag from the corner. And then I hit return. Now I want to do the inside of the eye. Same thing, circle tool again. Hold down shift. And then I can use the move tool to move it. And I can use edit, free transform to scale it, and I can use Command Plus to zoom in on it. I can get it there. I can be a perfectionist if that's helpful to you. But of course, you're going to make your own emoji. You're going to have control over all this and hit Return. Now I want to change its color. It's no longer white. I want to make it black. So I double click and I choose black in the color window. Now, if I want to see what my vector shapes look like, 
and only my vector shapes. I turn off my background sketch and I turn off my onion skin. And those are the three vector shapes I have so far. Perfectly clean vector shape graphics, which is the goal of this. Now, what about these ears? Those are a little bit more complicated, right? How can I layer those up and make those? Well, what I can do is either, I hate when it does that, either use the parametric shape tool, which I'll use so I can show you, straight-sided shapes, and then I want a triangle, right? Those ears look like triangles. So in, on the top here, I want it to be a polygon, but I want it to be three sides, right? And then that will give me a triangle shape. And then I can fill it already with the color. And if I want to steal the color from what I already have, I can just click on it. Right. Then I can use the move tool. can kind of move it into place. But I want to shape it. So what do I do? I say edit free transform, which will also let you move it. Will also let you rotate it and shrink it. But the ear of this emoji I've designed is a little bit curved. You can kind of see that in the transparency and not straight. So the great tool for that is the warp tool. You right click within the free transform box, you warp, just like we did with our line art. And if you didn't get to do a warp a lot with your line art, you'll certainly get to do it a lot with this. And then I can curve that triangle where I need it. Now the thing about emojis and flat graphics in general is they like to do a lot of repetition. So these are the shapes I have so far. What's the problem I have? Well, this shape is overlapping the eye. So I just need to move it underneath the eye. It's just like stacks of paper. Each vector shape will be its own layer asset. Now, repetition means that instead of doing that whole process again to try to match the ear on this side, it would be better professional practice to just duplicate this one. So just like I duplicated the sketch at the bottom, I'm going to hit Command-J duplicate that ear, and then I'm going to do edit free transform to flip it, right click inside, flip it horizontally to get a mirror image with that copy. And if I hold down shift, it will lock it, usually, <laughs> and then I can kind of line it up. And you see my ears are getting a little bit bigger than my sketches because my oval is a little bit bigger and I'm just, you don't need to be exact, right? We just want to get control of this. And then if I want to see what I actually have, I turn off my onion skin layer and my sketch layer. And now I've got one, two, three, four, five shapes. As many vector layers as we had line art layers for exercise one, but we're just getting started. And any time I can go back to one of those layers, change its color, alter its shape, duplicate it, you know, use a different version of it. Like if I want to do the inside of the ears, this is a nice trick. I can duplicate that again, then go to free transform, change its color so you can see it, maybe give the cat pink ears on the inside. And then with free transform, just hold down option and drag it from the corner. And that will shrink it from every side equally. Right. And then how do I move that shape over to this side? Well, I duplicate it, Command J. Edit Free Transform, the shortcut for which is Option Command T. So I can just do Option Command T. Right click inside it, flip it horizontally. I know it sounds like a lot, but we do it just through repetition. These are basic compositing skills. And then put it down. So that's how I would recreate this component, you know, this idea. I've already started to add shapes that I like. S same exact thing if we're going to go from an original concept. So if I take this sketch here, Take a little screen grab of it. Actually, no, I already have it. I'll just take it from the file. I'm going to drag and drop this in. 